Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Campus Consortium's grant webinar featuring $60,000 Mobile Campus Grant Award winner, Central Carolina Technical College. In today's presentation, Mr. Brian Davis, Director Information Systems, will share his journey on how Central Carolina Technical College utilizes this grant and how you can apply for a similar grant. Our presenters include Mr. Brian Davis, who is a Director Information Systems at Central Carolina Technical College, and Annie Hugh, Vice President, Community Engagement at Campus Consortium. We will take questions at the end of today's presentation that have been typed into the chat box or questions pane in your GoToWebinar control panel. Without further ado, please allow me to present Ms. Hugh and Mr. Davis. Over to you, Annie. Thanks, Roger, for giving us a quick introduction and a very warm welcome to everyone here at today's webinar. It's approximately 2.01 p.m. here in Central and Eastern Time in Cleveland, Ohio. And we're looking to go ahead and talk about how Central Carolina Technical College utilized the grant and took their mobile app live and how they've been using their app. So apart from that, we'll be giving you a brief on the grant program and how you can apply for the grant. Right, Roger, if you could please slide over to the next slide. For those of you who don't know about Campus Consortium, we're a nonprofit institution that will unite approximately 37,000 institutions globally. That's worldwide. The core values of the consortium are not only to build trust and collaboration with educational institutions, but also drive progressive spirit. Uh, we started back in 2003. We were founded by 14 universities, including University of Montana and Case Western Reserve University. We moved on to have 2,000 members and finally 37,000 members globally. Our mission is to reduce the cost of education throughout the world. And one of the ways that we do this is by going through the grant program to help institutions implement a mobile app. Roger, if you could please slide over. So the grant program, uh, we currently have three programs that are running in the current campaign. We have the attendance tracking grant, we have campus safety grant, and the campus portal grant. Now for those folks who joined us today, if you're interested, in any of these grant programs, you can visit our website at www.campusconsortium.org or simply go ahead and click on uh, Apply Now to download the application. Uh, we'll be sending you a copy of these slides so that you, you, know, you can go ahead and route yourself to the right destination. Roger, if you could please slide over. Apart from the running grant program, we also offer other grants uh, like the Password Manager and the Multi-Factor Authentication Grant, the Artificial Intelligence Grant, the Single Sign-On Grant, the Mobile Campus Grant, Studio for Students Grant, Office 365 Migration Grant, and Single Sign-On and Identity Grant. So basically what we do is, uh, uh, let's say for today you're interested in the uh, Mobile Campus Grant because you like what you saw for Central Carolina Technical College. We do have a few seats left. You can contact the consortium and uh, we'll send you the grant application. If you're one of the lucky few to get shortlisted, we'll go ahead and set up the meeting and proceed with next steps in qualifying you for the grant program. Slide over. So some of the grant award winners from last year in 2017, we received roughly about 500 applications. We shortlisted 48 institutions. And our grant award winners were uh, Averitt, we had Johnson C. Smith, we had Southwest Texas Junior College, Kennedy Westland College. So uh, typically they were very, very happy to receive the grant. Most of them are already implemented or are in the implementation phase, right? So we just put some of these names for you in case you want to contact them directly. Slide over. The next few sets for uh, institutions who came uh, roughly three months ago. One of them is already live. That's Dakota Western University. They took a campus safety app. They're very, very happy with it. It's uh, just helping them keep their campus safer. Uh, we had G Geneva College that recently came on. We have Shenandoah, we've got Orinoke, Chowan uh, Community College. So most of them are already here with the campus and supporting our mission. Slide over. So now I want to take some time to talk about Brian. Brian has been leading the whole project of implementing uh, the mobile app uh, down at Central uh, Carolina Technical College. He's spearheaded the whole implementation himself. Uh, selected uh, everything on behalf of the team, coordinated all this project. So he's the best person to talk about the working experience and how he got his app live and, you know, what were the roadblocks or project outcomes or objectives or what needed to get delivered in the IT department. 
and also uh, as an institution holistically for student engagement. So Brian is uh, the Director of Information and Learning Technologies, his director there, and uh, basically he's got 25 years of experience. Uh, he manages these information technology departments and projects across diverse industries. Uh, Brian is going to showcase a little bit about the mobile app as well, so you, you'll get a quick peek at the mobile app. He's also going to talk about his experience of how you went ahead with the grant program. Brian, I just want to do a quick audio test to make sure you can hear me uh, and that I have you on the other line. Okay. I can hear you just fine. Great. Brian, over to you from here. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our college um, and kind of the space that we fit in. We are a two-year public institution. Uh, founded in 1962, um, part of a 16 college system across the state of South Carolina. We're strategically spread out to serve uh, three to four county areas, um, mostly for uh, you know workforce development, getting students in. We also have a number of matriculation programs for associate degrees, uh, both in AA and AS as well, and some arrangements with uh, with our four-year institutions that are here in the in the state. Um, the niche that we were trying to fill here a bit with this mobile application was fitting this mobile app into our delivery platform. We've had a portal for some time. Uh, our students access that, but not everyone is always in front of a computer. Um, our newer students that are here now, our younger folks, they are certainly used to using handheld devices, and that's the, the niche that we wanted to fit into. We wanted to provide access to all of the available information that we normally would provide via the portal you know, in the palm of their hand. So um, to that end, we started looking into how we were going to accomplish that. Um, we're probably what we would consider to be a medium-sized institution in our group, about a 3,700 enrollment, about 8,500 students total annually through, um, through both our fall, spring, and uh, summer semesters. Here on this slide, you can see pretty much the layout of our technology background. We are a, um, an Aleutian Banner ERP customer here. I uh, have been on that since 2004. Uh, we use Desire to Learn or D2L for our LMS solution. Uh, some of our colleges also use uh, Blackboard. Uh, our email currently is Gmail. Uh, we are transitioning to Office 365 probably within the next year. And uh, the portal piece that we've always used has been Luminous. Uh, we recently upgraded from four to five, um, and that's been very, very successful for us. The SSO portion of it, which is very important to us with this mobile app as well, was the BEIS or CAS solution that we have. And so we wanted to make sure all of that was uh, was in place. As you can see on, on this slide as well, we have a, a variety of programs for online programming, cooperative agreements with other colleges, and of course the universities that, uh, that we work with as well. Uh, we do degree programs, diplomas, certificates, and we have some non-credit continuing education activities. So we kind of cover the full, full gambit. The college is actually spread across four counties. So we serve Sumter, Lee, Kershaw, and Clarendon counties. Uh, we have about 10 different facilities that we connect to, and my department's responsible for all the infrastructure planning, all the AV classroom technology planning, and then we run our own data center and support all of our own applications as well. So it's uh, it's a busy day for us most, most days. Uh, next slide. So this is a quick excerpt of what our project objective was. Uh, we were trying to deploy that mobile application. We wanted something that served our students, our faculty, staff, and had one sing single seamless interface. The other objective we had as well is we have a number of outreach um, recruitment activities, dual enrollment programs with area high schools. So we wanted to get our recruiters out and give them a way to go ahead and get students to download the app, even if they weren't currently a CCTC or a Central Carolina student, and start accessing some of our public information about our degree programs, give them access to our faculty and staff directory so they could reach out to individuals. And I'll be demoing that just a little bit later. Next slide. So these were the, the problem statements or challenges that we had. These were the requirements that we had for a mobile application that really went into our, uh, our planning. Uh, we wanted to make sure it was uh, CCTC branded. Um, we had access to the Aleutian application. We've owned it for some time, never deployed it because it was just not something that we were comfortable with. We wanted something that would represent Central Carolina in the Apple and Android stores. Um, we wanted something native, but we didn't want it limited to just those devices. We wanted to make sure it was available free so that anyone could download it. Um, we wanted to make sure we could brand it. Uh, put our logos on it, put our colors in place, let our PR department kind of drive that. 
And then we wanted to make sure that it was, of course, confidential and that it met our FERPA requirements. Next slide. Probably the, the top point there was most important for us. We wanted to uh, make sure that it would seamlessly integrate with our SSO solution. We didn't want students to have to remember anything other than their portal user ID and password that they were assigned when they enroll here at the college. Uh, presently, we're using an LDAP solution for that. We'll be probably moving to Active Directory um, Federated Services here soon. I uh, wanted to make sure it was future-proof and that we would be able to grow in that direction. Um, we wanted to make sure it was applet-based. This was important for us. Um, we didn't want to have a problem with our app and have to take the entire application offline. So we wanted to be able to surgically go in and say, okay, this one thing's not working for us, so we want to enhance this. We'll take this one feature out for now, but leave everything else in place. So that was an important feature set for us as well. And then, of course, making sure that it integrated with Banner, Luminous, D2L, DegreeWorks, Gmail, Blackboard Connect as well. Um, as we go forward, we're looking at uh, that Blackboard is, our, of course, our um, emergency notification system and wanted to put that in everyone's hands. So we have some, some future paths we're heading down with, with that. Next slide. We wanted a library of applets available to us. Um, one of the things that we like about this platform very much is that, first off, the banner applications for us came preloaded. We customized them uh, with the Unified's help, put them in place, um, was, was very successful with that. We wanted to have all of our public information available, so employee directory, news announcements, um, area event calendar, uh, the campus maps, how to, how to find our locations. Um, integrate with our existing data that's on our um, CCTC website and also through our web portal. We wanted certainly to have analytics. We wanted to make sure we knew what people were using, what they weren't using, um, how we were going to go about essentially uh, you know, keeping up with the usage on the system and whether it was actually a, a good value for the campus or not. That information is reported fairly regularly to our VPs and to our president. Uh, and then, of course, we wanted all of our social media integration. Our PR department here at the college runs those for us. So we have everything from Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, Instagram. It's, it's fairly comprehensive, and they manage all of that uh, and all of the, the news releases and so forth that we go through. And we wanted that to be concurrent with the mobile app. So when they push something out, it was also available right, right in someone's palm as well. Next slide. So this is how we went about doing this. We applied. Uh, to Campus Consortium. They connected us with their technology partner, Unified, and uh, Unified worked with us uh, with their project managers and their development team very closely to develop this over about an eight, eight to ten month time frame, tested it for a couple of months, and then we released it. So it took us about a year to get there. We have an internal um, review group that we built here at the campus, and they are uh, not only maintain our portal and, and provide content direction for the portal, but we've also looped the mobile app in with them as well. And it's comprised of a, a diverse group of folks, not only from the academic side, but also from our distance learning side, and of course also from our, uh, our student affairs side as well. Um, the, the solution is scalable, um, and we intend to continue to grow it. Uh, we're just about to release our email integrations and our D2L integrations. We're testing those now, and you'll be able to see the, the email integration with Gmail today. Next slide. So this is what we actually accomplished. Uh, we released this um, back in September of 2017. So we now have a platform. It's been well received uh, by our students. Uh, the solution provides that single interface that we were looking for, data appropriate for role, and that role is driven by our Luminous portal, portal roles. So however the role is built in our portal today is exactly how the portal uh, will operate or how the role will operate when it gets to the mobile application as well. And of course, at the, at the very bottom of this, we wanted the ability to do push notifications so we could notify our campus population on anything that was important that we thought they needed to know about instantly. And that capability is in, in there for us as well. Next slide. So <clears throat> I've gotten a few responses from some of our member colleges here at the, um, at the system uh, asking how we got folks to adopt it. And, and really what we ended up doing is pushing this through our PR department and advertising it. Uh, we use message boards um, that we develop slides for. We sent emails to students through their student email. We provided flyers at all of our student services locations. And uh, you know, our faculty and staff, of course, uh, talk about this app, not only in their classes, but also to students in their service areas. So we have right now over half of our FTE count that's already downloaded and through our analytics are actively using this application. Uh, I've had folks walk into the registrar's office. Um, they need to add or drop a class. They do it right from the palm of their hand. 
very convenient. They don't have to go to another building. They don't have to go find a computer lab. They can just take care of their, their needs right then. Um, we wanted to look at how we were going to continue to drive the development of this. We didn't want this to operate in a vacuum for us. So we have an annual survey of programs and services survey that we send out to all of our uh, students. We also have an internal survey that we do with our faculty and staff and questions are being placed on that about how you use the app, what do you like, what don't you like, what feature enhancements would you like to see. And then of course we also provide some things that we're thinking about and suggestions as well. That gets fed back into some analytics for us, goes back to that committee I talked about earlier, and that's how we prioritize what we're going to be doing with development on this app going forward. Um, really, like I said in, in the bottom, the success of this has prompted other South Carolina Technical College System institutions to consider this platform. Um, they're very interested in what we're doing. In fact, we're gonna be doing a presentation for our system with our mobile app uh, soon as well, and I, I think we'll have some more adoption there. Next slide. I'm going to switch over to my screen here and show you the interface. Um, is everything looking okay to you, Annie? Yes, Brad. We can see the screen. Very good. All right. So behind this simulator is the interface for the uh, app. It's web-driven, very easy to manage. Um, you could turn this over to your web developer in your department. They could keep up with this. There's nothing that's going to be unusual for someone with that skill set to be able to reach in and manage this. Um, we've not done a lot with this. Unified's actually set it up, so we've been real happy with it. But you can see all of the public applets. Anything that's red is not published currently because we wanted to, to do this a little differently. Uh, the banner applets are here and, de and deployed. And then we're working through our D2L applets now. So um, this simulator allows you to simulate the application immediately uh, in a web browser before you even push it to the devices, which is awesome. Um, we have both a iPhone or iPod or Apple uh, integration and then also Android's capable as well. Um, here I'm just showing, this is what the public interface looks. If you download the app and you do not have a student account with the college, this is what you get to see. Um, so you can access our YouTube feeds and everything that our PR department publishes out here and play these directly on your device. Uh, you can access your Facebook feed. Now in the handheld device, this will appear of course in their browser on the handheld side. Here on my desktop, it's actually going to open another window, but it links directly over to our Facebook page. Twitter works the same way, links over to our Twitter feeds. Here's our campus directory. This is fed directly from our website um, directory. That's maintained by our PR department. So as we onboard faculty and staff, this is updated every day. And you can search by title. The convenience of this is if you wanted to call someone, you can find me quickly. And then all my information's here. If you click on the email button, you click on the phone button, it's going to use the features of the email or the phone capabilities to actually call out dial out. It gives students very quick access to their faculty and staff members that they need to reach. This is updated nightly through a batch job that we have from our uh, XML feed right off of our website. So we have one single point to update. I don't have to go update the, uh, the mobile app as well. As soon as our PR department updates our online directory, it's pushed out to this as well. It's running off of the same data set. Uh, Campus News is exactly the same way. This is fed off of our website. So as news feeds are being updated, this information gets updated automatically. Uh, photos, anything else that they publish through our website come through here. And it's refreshed instantly from, from that source. Let's pull back up here. Events, this feeds directly off of the college's events calendar that's actually in our Luminous portal. So as new events are added, once again, we have one data source and the same information is represented here for students to be able to keep up with what's going on on the, on the campus at any given point in time. Campus maps, this is the part I talked about earlier. This shows our service area. It shows all of our campus locations across those four counties. And this is our main campus buildings that are set up here. And then we have our various remote campus locations that are here as well. We have a couple of locations here at Shaw Air Force Base. Uh, where we have some base education uh, locations. Of course, it doesn't quite know where I'm at, but um, you can zoom directly in. 
The phone is, of course, much more accurate with the GPS module, but our building uh, maps are actually in here as well. And so you can get directly onto one of our, our Central Carolina locations. Uh, Instagram is the same thing, links directly into that location. And then if you have a library service module where folks can check out books and so forth, you could link that in. We don't actually use that in our library as an online tool. You come to the library and you can check it out. So here we link directly to our library page instead to provide all the resources about our, our library service. Now what I wanted to show you is the authentication piece. So once someone actually, this is a test account we use, but once someone actually gets an account on our Luminous portal, so a student enrolls, they're assigned that, they get that information instantly during their uh, advisement appointment, they can then authenticate to the app. And the rest of the applications will appear for them. And so these are all of the banner applications that get them directly into their uh, information that's stored in our student record system. We organize these. These can be organized however you like. This was the way that the, the team decided they wanted to do them in kind of a flow order. Of course, we started with email. This hasn't been turned out to our students yet, but this transitions directly over to the Gmail piece. Um, start with the lookup classes. Here you can go and select a term. This is uh, loading directly off of our banner database. You can pick a uh, particular subject class, and then you can see what's available for that term. CRNs are available so they can register quickly. All the information is available, the number of seats, the days that it meets, and all the information a student's going to need in order to decide whether that class is right for them or not. And this is just a, a research tool. Once you're the, past that point, then we work into a add drop classes. Now we have a registration agreement requirement. This was not something that was native in this app. Unified helped us add this in, uh, but it's one of the requirements that we have here in South Carolina. So we link off to all of the things that we need to link off to in case students have additional questions. Once they agree to this, it takes them into the, basically a shopping cart type driven system where they can go in, select a, once again, a, a subject, and now they can begin to add classes. And here it shows the capacity, it shows how many are remaining, how many are currently occupied, so it lets them know how full these are. To add that, they simply click on one of these shopping cart links. It adds in place, I'm not gonna register a student right now because it would cause a problem over in our registrar's office, but um, this is how they would go through doing this. And then of course they can look at their current schedule to decide where their classes need to fit in if they're adding or dropping something in particular. Back up here. Lost some screen for a second. Student schedule. I'm not sure that we have this test student enrolled in anything. Maybe we do. I don't think so. But this displays the, the full schedule for the students. Uh, if we had real student data in here, you would see that. Financial aid's important. Uh, probably don't have any aid year information in here. I doubt, because we haven't done that. You have to have a real social security number and a FOSFA. But uh, this works really well. One of the more popular things that our students use, it gets some uh, tracks requirements. We have certain letters they have to sign, certain things that they have to meet before we actually award financial aid. Those get displayed in this pane so they can see what they have left to do. And then once the awards are in place, they'll be populated over in this pane. And you can see the cost of attendance, initial need, and so forth. And then finally, an account summary showing them where they are for that particular aid year. Uh, grades are available. I I think we may have something posted in here, possibly not. But midterm grades get posted here, and this is the banner data. We also, in the D2L, will have individual grades during a course as well, which is more important. It gives you a more granular view of where you're on that course. That'll be coming here shortly as soon as we get, get that released. Uh, student schedule, final grades are here. Here's one that we have in place. This was a FERPA class that was taken, and simply one credit either succeed or you know or fail this shows the overall academic transcript populates all that information as well transfer credit transcript details and basic registration status information so if you're coming in for the summer this shows that they're in good standing their academic standing but they have holes on their account 
and we've placed one of those on simply for test testing purposes. Account summary. This just gives you a billing summary from our accounting office of where you are, what fees you may owe, what your total charges are. This gives them a quick view of their bill and what to expect. And of course, as we mentioned before, a hold, if we place it on the account, it shows you what the holds on, why, et cetera. And then this feature was, was nice for us. We have an address update capability. Um, students can go in and update their address information. Now, the way this app worked originally for us, it was directly modifying our banner immediately. Our registrar didn't want it to do that. She wanted to make sure the, um, the database changes came to her first for a review. So Unified helped us modify this so that when the address change is made, it actually transmits an email to our registrar's uh, email box. They review it and then they go and input the change. Uh, similarly, on our, if you're a faculty staff member, instead of sending it to the registrar, this information would go to our HR department instead for that change. A couple of other things that we added in. If I can get this to stay here for me. Uh, emergency contacts. Um, there's not a lot of that that was ever populated in our system because we never really provided a good interface for students to be able to go update that which is a problem for us in, a, in an emergency situation. So we've now turned out the ability to add as many emergency contacts as you'd like into the system. Students can manage that and review their own information and update it instantly. Uh, emergency contact information, this gives folks a quick way to dial our uh, emergency mobile number that goes directly to our security department that's here so they can get reach out to security instantly if they find something is, is amiss. And that's pretty much where we are at the moment with the, uh, the mobile application. Um, and is there anything else you want me to cover while I'm here? No, I think that pretty sums it up. And I'm just going to log back out and it goes back to this view. Um, the one thing I'll say before I hand it off is, like I said, it's been very easy to manage. Um, I would like to, you know, we use this screen quite a bit. This is our analytics piece um, showing where we are, downloads. It populates in a few moments, gives us the information, shows us our total total uh, deployment count, and you get specific information about the, uh, the individual applications that are used, your top five, your bottom five, which can give you some in indication as to what you might not need to keep on your app. You can see Instagram is the last thing people use here. Uh, device model information, you get a lot of analytics on how your app's being used, including your actual usage over time. Uh, this is all useful when I have to go back to our, uh, our VP, our president, and say, Here's what this is doing for us. Here's how we're using it. Here's what folks are uh, are actually getting out of this. All right, Annie, I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Brian. So I'm just going to quickly go over uh, uh, the questions for today's forum. I just wanted to shout out to the audience. If there's any questions for Brian, please let us know, and we can get that addressed. So, Brian, I have a question from the audience. This is regarding marketing. Uh, a lot yeah. of uh, institutions generally come in and ask us about marketing and how, how how do you market the app on campus because it's very nice to go ahead and get it implemented, but, you know, how do you go out to students and tell them that they need to use it? Um, well, our PR department's been critical for that. In fact, we made sure that we added our PR department representatives onto that team of folks that are driving the uh, the look and feel and operation of this app. Uh, so they helped us design, um, like I said, we have plasma displays or screens, uh, LCDs that are in every building. So we have advertising going there. Um, it rotates in with a bunch of other advertising we have. It's in our student services area. Um, we have a number of events on campus for students as well and um, a variety of things. I mean, we have folks that come in for job fairs. They come in for, um, you know, some of our um, college um, transfer days so that they can meet other colleges and figure out where they're going if they want to continue on their education after this two-year degree that they get. We also have just student events like we have a Central Gration Fest going on right now where we do food services, games, and so forth for our student population. During those events, we set up tables. We made sure we had some of our IT staff and some of our PR staff available, and we helped folks, if they were interested, go ahead and download the app, get it applied. We actually did some door prizes. Um, for folks that, that decided to do that, put their name in a, in a hat, if you will, and we uh, we pulled some some uh, you know winners for that. We also printed about 15,000 flyers, half-page flyers, that we made available and put stacks of those up in all of our student service areas. 
Um, we sent out emails. Um, we stay. We pushed it to our Facebook uh, feeds through PR, through our Twitter feeds to make people aware. And like I said, we've gotten really, really good feedback. The only only complaint that I've heard really has been, you know, we wish we could get our email, wish we could get our D2L. Those things were already on the roadmap, but we wanted to go ahead and get the app out before um, we had to spend a bunch of time developing those. So by probably by the end of this month, we'll actually turn those two things out. And of course, we'll modify our our PR campaign a bit for that. But we have an awesome PR department here that that does a great job with that. So I would definitely recommend if if you get ready to implement this, don't do this just as an IT thing. Um, definitely get the rest of your college involved and make sure that you've really got an adoptance across the entire college with it. I think you can bring in your your academic staff, you know, get your professors to talk about it in classes. Um, just just provide some some push for it in that regard, and we continue to drive that so it doesn't just fall off and people don't continue to hear about it. Thank you, Brian. That's very very informative. Uh, another question that we have from the audience is that we have a very small IT staff. And, uh, you know, we want to know what are the challenges that we may face to do the implementation. Uh, how difficult was it for you? And, you know, what kind of team members did you need to have preemptive already? Do you need to have a full-time mobile administrator to take on this challenge? No, I don't have one. Um, eventually, if we get into developing our own applets into this, which the capability is there, there is a development piece of this. Um, then you would want someone to to have some some experience with that, someone that's got some web based experience, someone that's got some you know programming experience to be able to implement. One of the nice things about this, we talked about the library of applets. Those are available in the interface, and one of the things that colleges are doing is if they develop something, they upload it. You can go download that and then modify it or customize it for your needs at your college and not have to reinvent the wheel. So it helps all of us share resources and not have to, um, you know, do it all on our own. Um, for us, Unified, you know, we set up the, the scope of what we wanted, which was public applications. We wanted banner integration. We wanted email. We wanted D2L. They have done all of that for us as part of this project. Um, and it's been a, an absolutely smooth process. Unified has been awesome to work with. Uh, their project managers keep up with us. I have weekly status calls with them. They stay in touch. They have a great ticketing and help desk system. And any issues we've had, they've resolved very, very quickly. Probably been one of the best um, system integration groups I've ever worked with. Thank you, Brian. Uh, I'm just going to take one more question for the day. And uh, the question is that, uh, you know, whatever you drive, something new or new initiative on campus, uh, when they talk about integration, they, they don't want any stressors for the mobile app. So were there any stressors that you had to go through in terms of sharing information? documentation or security protocols for building those connectors uh, with the team? Uh, were they really stressful? Were you okay with it? Uh, how much documentation did you need to provide? Um, we really, are we talking, I just want to clarify, are we talking about internally or are we talking about between the vendor and us when we had to get the integrations done? More on the lines of ERP integration, like if you have a bunch of oh, banner yeah. applets, right? So each one of them oh, is yeah. a specific yeah, yeah. module. I'll talk, I'll talk about that. Um, you know, the, the security model on this, we, we really do like the way that this is architected. Um, the unified solution sits in their data center cloud. So this is a cloud-based service. So we have no on-site infrastructure, additional infrastructure needed to support it. We maintain a secure branch office VPN tunnel for encryption between us and that data center. Um, so all of our mobile app users connect to our own instance of that cloud, but they're not using our bandwidth. The only time our bandwidth is used is when they actually make a request for their data. It all flows across that one secure line, um, comes back into our banner system and uses our, um, our self-service banner modules to be able to deliver that, uh, that information. So it's no different than what they're getting off the portal through their internet service provider today. Uh, of course, we had Unified sign our, uh, you know, our acceptance agreements, our FERPA agreements, and so forth. So we have all that security in place. As far as implementing it, um, you know, just the basic things you would do with any other implementation with your ERP, um, they already have Unified provide us with the, the data discovery documents that they needed, information they had to have in order to program this app for us. We circled that through our applications group and our systems group filled those things out, sent them over to them securely, and uh, the implementation, you know, like I said, went very smoothly. It's it's really was not painful at all. Thank you, Brian, for definitely working us through that. It was very, very informative. I'm sure uh, most of the questions that came in from the audience were answered towards the mobile app. I have a couple of questions uh, on the grant program, and I think this is for me. 
to answer is that, uh, you know, what kind of grants do we have? So, yes, we did run a mobile campus grant that was uh, in the last quarter of 2017. We do have a couple of seats left, which is about four of them. So folks that have joined us today, uh, whoever called you to this I seminar or whatever email you receive from us, you will be receiving a copy of the presentation, a recording, and also a link to the grant application in case you want to request to get one for the mobile campus grant. So you could apply for that. If you want to go ahead in a different arena, you want to go to the campus safety route, we also have a campus safety app, and uh, you could also apply for that. So it really depends on what you want to apply for. There are a lot of grant programs. If you don't see them listed on our uh, on our slides, please feel free to contact us. Uh, we might have some seats open uh, to award those grants in those segments. Um, apart from that, I think uh, uh, the you know if you need to go ahead and contact here is some of the information. Uh, you can go visit the website at www.campusconsortium.org or visit our, uh, or just send us an email at grantapplication at campusconsortium.org. One of our grant officers will get in touch with you to make sure uh, this is taken care of. Um, so I'm just trying to look if we have any more questions for the day. Um, yes, yeah, so somebody's asking about the scope of the mobile campus grant. So typically when we do these grant programs, we try to first check as to uh, how soon do you need the mobile app? What is required on campus? And then uh, we go ahead and show you what's in scope and what's out of scope. So typically we try to put, uh, you know, bundle it up for you, like give you a couple, you know, uh, 14 basic applets, some ERP applets, some LMS applets, some financial aid applets, right? And then you have the option of uh, getting a social feed, such as Unified Connect. You also have several uh, options of, uh, uh, taking your own custom design and branding so you don't have to pay anything extra. The implementation cost is covered. The licensing cost is covered. Uh, it's very, very explanatory on the grant application form. So if you do want it, you can request it. We can send it over to you. You can go through it. Um, that is definitely something that you want to look forward to. Uh, also, if you want to talk to Brian, I also get a first-hand feedback uh, you know, it's very different when I'm telling Brian to say something, right? <laughs> but it's very different if you want to connect with him offline. Please feel free to go and do so. Uh, like I said, you know, in today's world, you can't blindly trust someone. So uh, it's always good to go ahead and connect offline and find out. I, I haven't seen a single person come back and say, no, you, you know, they didn't talk good about you. So um, it, it's been really, really nice. The journey has been nice. And uh I'd like to thank everyone who's joined us today, especially Brian. It was really, really good. I think we enjoyed watching what you guys have done so far. I'll be waiting to see the D2L version. I'm sure a lot of folks who joined us today would like to see that going forward. And uh, I'm sure you'll keep up with the best practice sharing, uh, Brian. We'll see, we hope to see more from you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Have a great rest of the day. This is Annie Hugh and Brian Davis signing off. Have a great day. Bye-bye.